New Shepard is just the beginning. The first step. From the very start, it's only been about one thing. Earth. Earth, our blue origin. We've sent robotic probes all over the solar system, and it's full of wonders. Gas giants, rocky moons. Earth is the best planet. It is not close. Despite the variety, despite the wonder in the solar system, there's no place like home. There is no place like Earth. All life on Earth are uniquely matched to this planet. There's nothing like it anywhere else in the solar system. Not even close, no way. We have no choice but to preserve Earth. Preserve this planet, this one. We get to focus on the future, and the future is, is nothing without Earth. For almost all of human history, Earth has seemed big. It seemed big, but we now know it's small, it's finite. And we know that the rate that we're using Earth's resources is not sustainable. Earth has things that we need to work on in the here and now. But there are also long-term problems. We can't wait to work on the long-term problems. We have to work on both. One fundamental long-term problem. We will run out of energy on Earth. It's just arithmetic. It's going to happen. Humans have always used about 100 watts of power. We're like a light bulb. That's our natural metabolic rate. But in our developed technological society, we use over 10,000 watts of power per person. Humans' use of energy is actually not a bad thing. We live in an era of dynamism, of growth. There are so many good things that happen when we use energy. Think about technology, transportation, hospitals, data. As humans, we are at our best when we are inventing, when we are growing, when we are making progress. But humans are doubling our energy use every 25 years, and that's unsustainable. Today, you could cover all of humanity's energy needs by covering the state of Nevada and solar cells. But in just 200 years, our energy use is growing so fast, we would have to cover the entire surface of the Earth in solar cells. What can we do? Can we be more efficient? Yes, but we have been. Today's technology is more efficient in nearly every manner. We are gaining efficiency. And yet, when we gain more efficiency, what do we do? We use even more. We have an ever-increasing demand for more energy. So what if we just use less? Well, that doesn't work either. Throttling energy use means slowing down progress. You stop living in a world of abundance and now you've moved to a world of scarcity and rationing. There has to be another way. There is another way. Space. Space is full of abundant resources and energy. Space is vast and practically limitless. If we could learn to harness the power of space, the resources of space, we could tap the limitless resources to help this planet. We can go to space for what we need. We'll make it routine, safe, and cost-effective to get there. We will build the rockets and the destinations for doing real work in space. We can do even more than this. We can move the most polluting industries from Earth into space where they can't hurt the Earth or the environment. We can return Earth to a beautiful, natural state. It will be like a garden, like a national park, a place for education, for creativity, and for recreation. A place for enjoyment and for nature to thrive. In space, we can expand humanity. We don't want to leave Earth behind, but preserve it and expand from Earth into space. We can have a trillion humans in the solar system, which means we'd have a thousand Mozarts and a thousand Einsteins. This would be an incredible civilization. Humanity will grow and progress and use energy for good. Humanity can expand into the solar system by building destinations close to Earth close to our home planet. New places, places we haven't even dreamed of yet. Places that feel like home, places where great work can be done using the resources of space, an expanse that is meant for everyone, all kinds of people. This is a hopeful future. 
an enduring human presence in space. Space is the long-term solution for Earth. We are building a critical part of the infrastructure that's gonna allow others to unlock the road to space so that future generations can unleash their creativity. It won't be easy. Space must become much, much more accessible to make this vision a reality. Big things start somewhere, and that somewhere happens to be today. There are certain gates we have to go through, certain prerequisites. If we don't do these, we will never get there. First, we have to radically lower the cost of access to space. This means reusable rockets. We need to get really, really good at using rockets over and over again. Reusable rockets, reusable engines. Once you learn how to do that, you can basically start spinning this flywheel where the more you fly, the cheaper it gets. The cheaper it gets, the more you fly. Launch, land, repeat. Going back and landing a rocket is really hard. And it is absolutely essential that we get good at that so that we can drive down the cost of launch vehicles. BE-3, BE-4, BE-7, all made from the ground up to be reusable propulsion systems. Operational reusability. That means making space travel as routine as air travel is. This is what will radically bring down the cost of getting to space. And we are bringing all of that learning to New Glenn, the next step of building the road to space. So once you have low cost access to space, the second gate becomes actually accessing the resources of the solar system. Space resources. There are so many more resources up there in space than there is on our planet. I mean, everyone's familiar with this idea of locally sourced goods, and this is just a really extreme version of that. The moon is where we'll learn to do all this. The moon has a vast quantity of resources. And if we can learn to harness those resources, we can travel without stressing the Earth. That's the goal. We'll go to space, and we'll use its resources to power our transportation and build destinations. Anything we need, we will use the stuff in space to make it happen. The moon is the next thing. We're going back. It's time to go back to the moon, this time to stay. Make no mistake about this. This is not gonna get done by any one generation. One of the things that we have to do is inspire those future generations. This vision of millions of people living and working in space for the benefit of Earth is a very, very long-term vision. It's gonna take generations. We have to make sure that what we're doing today is setting up the next generation. It's gonna take all kinds of people. Engineers, entrepreneurs, architects, artists. You, your children, your grandchildren. This is kind of Humanity's cathedral, you know, cathedrals took multiple generations of, of artisans and craftsmen and masons to build. And there was never the expectation that one person would design and fully execute the vision. We have to inspire the next generation to carry this torch for the benefit of Earth. For the benefit of Earth. For the benefit of Earth. We are Blue Origin. And we will do all of this. We'll do all of this for the benefit of Earth.